Raiden Shogun, the Electro and first female Archon we meet in Genshin Impact is getting her rerun. And since I never made one when she came out, here is my guide on one of my favorite characters in Genshin Impact. You probably have already watched so many guides upon her hype, so in my guide, I'm mainly going to focus on how to build her, her weapons, constellation versus her signature weapon, and the teams. So without further ado, let's get into it. The only thing I'm going to say about the talents is to make sure you start off with Raiden's elemental skill in order to boost up all your teammates burst for the fight. And just refresh it when you can, especially towards the end of her burst, but it usually has 100% uptime. Her energy recharge does affect how much electro damage bonus she has and how much she batteries her team. At 200% energy recharge, she gives 20 energy to her team, and at 300% energy recharge, she gives 27.5 energy to her whole team. And by her whole team, I mean each team member. Try to use everybody's burst before Raiden's in order to give her as much resolve stack she needs so that way she can do as much damage as possible during her elemental burst and if you're looking to min max the amount of damage you can do during her burst on the raiden shogun mains discord they definitely have a bunch of gifs that you can look at depending on what you kind of want to do or what's more comfortable for you personally for me since i play on pc i just try to do charge attack cancels as much as possible of course you won't always have the perfect scenario of a enemy standing still because she does kind of do knockback depending on what team or what you have going on but at the end of the day it's just min maxing so you don't really need to do this and that's pretty much the main points about her talents going forward i think i will keep talents brief and short like this if you think this is okay let me know in the comments or let me know hey no Hydro Sam, you should cover each talent individually. Usually, like, I feel like people can just figure out the character's talents by themselves. They don't really need that much explanation. So anyways, now let's move on to her artifacts and weapons and how to build Raiden. For her artifact set, the best one hands down is the Emblem of Seraphate 4-piece. If you have anything else, then you're not using Raiden to her full potential and it's pretty much Copium. If you don't care about Raiden's damage, I guess you can go for like a 4-piece Tenacity of the Millilith. Because of her elemental skills, she can provide that buff 100% uptime for her, your whole team. And the last kind of meme slash alternative build is a maximum elemental mastery build. This build can give you some beefy overload and electro charge damage, and it's kind of free to play friendly, if you, especially if you pair it with like a dragon's bane. I made a video on that if you wanna see that in action. But anyways, for the subsets of your flower and feather, the priority is of course crit rate slash crit damage, energy recharge, and attack percent. Finding these four stats in a piece would be a god roll as they say. For the sands and goblet combination, you either want an energy recharge sands paired with an attack percent goblet, or an attack percent sans piece paired with an electro damage goblet. And I will show you the comparison of, of these two when we go over the weapons. And so lastly for the circlet, either crit rate or crit damage depending on your substance. So for the weapons, I'm going to show you a comparison of two extremes. R5 the catch as a complete F2P option versus an R1 engulfing lightning. I'll show you a comparison of complete raw damage between the two. I'll also inform you right now that I do indeed have C2 Raiden, but that doesn't affect the percent indifference between what I'm about to show you. With an R5 catch, the stats I'm showing you on screen right now, and max resolve stacks, I was able to achieve 105,000 damage no food buff was added except for crit rate food, just in case I got unlucky. With the R1 engulfing lightning and the stats I'm showing you on screen and max resolve stacks, I was able to achieve 135,000. The percent in difference between these two weapons is about 20-ish percent. Not too bad overall, I just love the fact that any Genshin player is still able to get the catch no matter when they start the game. And you may be wondering what build did you use to achieve this maximum damage? I actually used an attack person sans piece with an electro damage goblet for both weapons. Let me show you the comparison versus an energy recharge sans and an attack percent goblet. For the catch, when I used an energy recharge sans piece and an attack percent goblet, I got about 98,000. And using this number in comparison with the 105,000 we got earlier, the percent in difference is only about 6.7%. It is really minimal and honestly, for a more practical use like in Spiral Abyss, I would take the 6.7% damage loss in order to have more energy recharge on my Raiden so that way she can battery my team better. Especially when the Spiral Abyss consists of single target bosses that do not generate energy particles. For the R1 Engulfing Lightning, when I used an energy recharge sand and attack percent goblet, I got about 131,000. Using this number in comparison with the 135 we got earlier, the percent of difference in damage is only about 3% give or take. I think the point about practical versus damage is emphasized more if you have the R1 engulfing lightning. And for all the people who are able to max refine this weapon, eventually energy recharge sans piece and attack percent sans piece will beat out your attack percent sans and electric damage goblet. But overall, ER sans and attack percent goblet is just more practical just because of what I said earlier when I was talking about the catch. And just for fun, here is the damage we're able to achieve with my hyper raiding carry team that consists of 
12 C6, level 12 Sarah with LG of the end, C6, level 12 Benny with max base attack, and unfortunately, my F2P Kazuha that only has 861 elemental mastery. Cloud time. The birds come. I'm going in. Glory to the Shogun. Torn to oblivion. Fallen huh. leaves adorn my night. Teamwork is trick. Quiver. Glory to the Shogun. Torn to oblivion. If you are enjoying the video or found it helpful so far, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe in order to help support the video and the channel overall. Follow my Twitch if you're interested in live content, especially when I film for these types of videos. And so to finish off the weapons, I will now show you how the R5 catch matches up against other pole arms using the same builds we have been using. Torn to oblivion! Torn to oblivion! Inazuma shines eternal! You shall perish! So here's a question I get a lot, C2 or R1 engulfing lightning? And I think this question is more common right now because at the time of this recording, her rerun is coming out and players who love Raiden have a second chance to give her an upgrade that they missed the first time around. So if you're a player who's looking to upgrade their Raiden, my suggestion is honestly C2 over R1 engulfing lightning. I never encourage to waste gems for constellations or weapons, but if you're a death set on using them here, and if you have enough, then yes, C2 over R1. C2 according to the Raiden Shogun mains gives about a 44% increased damage to her burst and only her burst as far as her rotations within like a 20 second rotation a 30 to 37 percent damage boost and earlier we talked about how the catch versus the r1 engulfing lightning was only like a 20 ish percent difference so c2 gives more value than r1 but then again c2 is only for riding shogun versus if you get the engulfing lightning or you can use that weapon for other characters but it just depends on you the weapon banner system is still a scam and i don't want you to feel the pain of hitting hard pity for like a guaranteed engulfing lightning because that's a lot of primo gems down the drain whereas like the character banner it can be a little bit more forgiving since you do have that guaranteed 50 50 in case you lose it and also since bennett is on the banner it's definitely a good time to try and get more constellations for one of the best supports in genshin impact overall once again none are needed but if you are dead set on upgrading your raiden then honestly c2 just feels way better to play because you can actually dps with her and i feel like it's just better than having c0 with r1 and golfing lightning So for the teams, it's really easy. Raiden National is one of the most standard and basic teams in Genshin Impact. What's good about this team is that it only consists of one 5 star, which is heavily preferred, especially for free to play pairs. The less expensive units, the better, but honestly, I don't think I need to cover how this team works and why it's good. You've probably seen it already so many times. So instead, I'll just tell you that I play this team on the current Spiral Abyss, and, and yes, it still does the job. The only thing I will say is that the overload can make it hard to group up enemies, but in the current Spiral Abyss, you don't need to do that much grouping, you don't need that much crowd control because a lot of them are like kind of like boss enemies, single boss or maybe even two max. And for floor 12, use this team in the first half because the wolf lord will absolutely destroy you unless you're able to like kill it before the shield phase but definitely don't use it for the wolf lord, it's just pain. Raiden Hyper Carry is another great team but honestly it requires either two or one things, either you have C2 Raiden or C6 Sarah. The whole team revolves around boosting up your Raiden. And if you do happen to have C6 Sarah, Benny, and Kazuha, then C0 Raiden is viable. But if you have to substitute Kazuha or C6 Sarah for other alternatives, then your Raiden damage does go down a lot. And that's where the C2 Raiden would come in and fill in the gap a bit. This team is still really solid in the Spiral Abyss. And actually, if you have C2 Raiden, C6 Sarah, you can actually kill that Wolf Lord before its shield phase. So you can actually use this team in the second half of the Spiral Abyss right now, and it will just destroy everything. It's a really nice team that appreciates Raiden for her damage, and I don't know why, but it just feels really good pulling out that sword out of your chest and freaking just slashing everybody and seeing those big numbers all over the screen. Overall, Raiden Hyper Carry, I like it a lot. The only thing that sucks about it is that it takes away Bennett and Kazuha from your second team in Spiral Abyss. And since we're talking about like Electro, one team I will add is that just in case you have it, and this is a team that I've been having fun with, it's like a mono-electro team. It has Yaimiko, Raiden's, C6 Sarah, 
and Jean. Honestly, it's a really fun team. C6 Sarah can split herself to boost up Yaimiko with her elemental skill, and he can use Sarah's burst to boost up Uridans. So that's that's a way you can kind of split up Sarah. And then Jean is awesome because she can heal up everybody and lower the electro resistance for your enemies. Overall, a really solid team, and it definitely has my waifu over meta stamp of approval. So just in case you have this team, I suggest you try it out. It's really fun. The last thing I'll mention is my Eula plus Raiden team. I've already made a showcase slash guide on why this team is good. And one of the main reasons why I like this team is because first, Eula, Raiden, and Rosario are all waifus. They're all really beautiful. And second is that this team does not require Bennett, which definitely helps you create a second team for your Spiral Abyss. If you want to make this team completely waifu or meta, you can replace Diona with like Jean. Of course, you will be facing some energy issues if you do, but you know, at the end of the day, if you don't care, you don't care, right? It's whatever you want to play. And one thing I have learned from playing this team is that I prefer Eula with a crit rate above 70%, which is where C2 Rosara can definitely help with. And Raiden doesn't have to do damage on this team. You can focus energy recharge on her in order to batter your Eula. And if you really don't care about your Raiden damage, you can put a tenacity of the Middleth on her. And it's not a bad set for this team because she will be giving that 100%, 30% damage boost to your whole team. This team still works really well in Spiral Abyss. So overall, Raiden Shogun has plenty of teams you can fit her in. And she is one of the most versatile five-star support units in the game. Overall, I think Raiden is a character that can upgrade your account for Spiral Abyss teams. And I think C0 is definitely worth pulling. So I think that's pretty much it. I might have missed some stuff. If I did miss some important stuff, you can go ahead and comment down below so that way other people who check out the video or the comment section can see that helpful information that I missed. And if you enjoy my guides and want me to keep making more, the best way to let me know is by liking and commenting on this video because I know I'm not the best person for guides, but I'm definitely grateful for my community that clicks on my videos and supports the channel. Anyways, I love you all so much. And remember, life over meta, and I'll see you all in the next video.